Problem 15 has a few parts and would be a good example or application of a multi-part um, on a free response or a great lab question. So we're looking at nickel ions in solution and we have a graph here of the absorbance at different wavelengths. The highest absorbance is right around that 400 or slightly below in terms of nanometers wavelengths. If we then want to apply this to find out more about how well it's absorbing, we would use the equation here, A equals epsilon BC. The measured value for absorbance is about 0.4. Our path length or the size of our cuvette is one centimeter. The molarity is 0 0.08. And we can solve for our molar absorptivity constant. Those can be huge numbers or tiny numbers. They can be all over the place. They vary. And it's very hard to know exactly what to expect. This isn't a common calculation to be able to do. But it is important to recognize the units here do have meaning. Those two units are necessary just to calculate or to cancel out so that we are at absorbance here. And the reason it's centimeters, even though the graph shows nanometers, remember the nanometers are the wavelength of light. The centimeters is what goes in right here as our path length. Once we know what our molar absorptivity constant is, we can take different information, we can measure an absorbance and find the concentration of that. So a higher or lower absorbance would correspond to either a higher or lower molarity and concentration. We can do that from a best fit line, or we can do that with this equation. If we had a calibration curve and a best fit line, our y-axis would be absorbance, but this time our x-axis, much like you saw in the notes, would be the concentration. In that case, we would look at the absorbance of 0.25, we would go over we would drop down from our line to see where that hits the x-axis, which we would see corresponds very closely to this molarity. This asks about two metals in an alloy. So this is a way we can separate or know about the different properties of an alloy would be by dissolving the ions and looking at the concentration of those ions. So we looked at um, chromatography, excuse me, as an example of all types. We looked at distillation. And right here, just dissolving and looking at these differences is a way that we don't necessarily separate them, but that we can differentiate between them. So in this example, we've got an absorbent spectrum from both of them. We ran the test to see how much copper should be in there. The copper should have been 21% but it was actually way over. When we look at what was done, the sample that they used for chromium had a fairly high absorbance. Chromium absorbs pretty well at 400 nanometers. It also absorbs very well around 550 to 600 nanometers. The problem is that stainless steel sample would also have iron in it. And if we look at the absorbance of iron around that 405 nanometers, it is exceptionally high. That means iron also absorbs that color of light. So if we set our spectrophotometer or colorimeter to that wavelength, light would go in and it would be blocked by the chromium, but also by the iron. If we didn't account for the fact that iron did that, we would assume that all of the absorbance was from chromium and therefore all of the molarity belonged to chromium or all of those molecules were chromium. That's not the case. We know that iron is blocking it as well. We should not use a wavelength that has a high absorbance for both of them. If we look at chromium again, that 550 to 600, about 575 is very high, but iron has almost no absorbance. So when using that sample or that wavelength, any absorbance could be attributed to chromium and only chromium. So then that absorbance would correspond to a molarity and an amount of chromium, which would be much more accurate in terms of its content.